Bonjour world and hello Squid Gamers. Recently I found an effect that I fell in love with on the Akufen's website. And as for every effect that I encounter and I find so cool, I just want to reproduce it from scratch by myself. And I did it, with the only exception that I replaced all the assets by super cool Squid Game illustrations. And the result is so dope. In today's video I'm gonna show you the different steps we need to rebuild such an amazing effect. And I'm not gonna lie, it was so hard that sometimes my face was just like this. The source code will be added to the description if we reach 200 likes, so make sure to support me if you want more videos like this and a GitHub access to the code. Thank you very much. As usual, before starting to code something, you better have to analyze it very well. Here are the features we needed to code to make this effect alive. A list of images that can infinitely scroll, rotating from left to right and right to left like a pendulum in function of the scroll, images taking 20% of the screen more or less, zoom and de-zoom, duplicate the effect for the side column and handle the side column's translations. Looking at this list, my honest estimation was 30 minutes for the first point, 30 minutes for the second one and two hours for the rest. Oh god, what an innocent boy I was back then. Let me tell you what went very bad and how we went from a three hour estimation to a nine hour long session of code. Oh, the first dissolution, the infinite scroll effect. I thought that this infinite scroll effect was something trivial. I had vaguely something in mind and it was supposed to do the job correctly. I wanted to do the things we do when we want to create a loop effect in an animation. For this kind of trick, we usually just duplicate the object one time before and one time after so that you can recycle the object at the beginning when it goes outside of the screen. This was my main idea and in theory it was not bad, but in practice it was not working. I mean, not working very well. The thing was doing what I wanted and the group of images leaving the screen was recycled and repositioned just after the group of images in the screen. But with a small gap that was not supposed to be there. A gap that I was totally unable to explain. Usually when something doesn't do exactly what I want, I understand why the code behaves differently. And I can then correct it pretty easily to make it work as I intended. As a computer dresser, I can bend the wheel of my computer to do what I want. Yeah! This time I couldn't. For one and a half hour, I tried so hard to understand why my code was not behaving the right way. And the chat was also helping me, but no one could find the right explanation. And I was so pissed off by this mystery that I could not manage to change my strategy and try a different approach. Fortunately for me, Nebrob, a super cool and talented French web creative developer was hanging out in the chat. He asked me to do a share screen so he can show me how he implemented this infinite scroll effect. The solution was very smart, but so different from mine. In fact, I was trying to move the whole block of the images while he was instead more focused on moving every image individually. It's better in this way because more efficient for the browser and also it avoids you duplicating content. And it's always cool to avoid duplicating content. I could have found this approach by myself if I had not been too far involved with my own solution. If I had been off stream, I would have needed to walk outside and come up with this different solution. Here Nebrob saved us from a walk. Thanks mate. But if my belly get bigger, it will be because of you. I have to confess, when it finally works after so long, you are so damn happy and you understand also why this infinite scroll was in the end not that trivial. It becomes even juicier when you had some easing in the scroll to smooth the wall experience. Oh, oh my god. So instead of 20 minutes, this effect cost me a whole Saturday morning and a lot of frustration. Shit happens sometimes. Fortunately for us, it was the last problematic feature of this project. Right? Right? Oh no. The second and last difficulty, getting the scroll acceleration. Soon after we had this infinite scroll, we wanted to implement the second interesting feature, which was the zoom effect when you scroll fast enough. The idea is to save in a variable the accumulation of the scroll until a max limit, and as long as we scroll, we stay at the max limit. But once we stop scrolling, every frame, we make this scroll accumulation variable reduce a little bit. In other words, with this logic, when we scroll, we reach a maximum of zoom, and when we release it, 
we then decrease the zoom effect. That's basically it. This logic was not easy to formalize and to make everything fluid and varying between the good values, at the good speed, in the good quantity, I had to play a lot with lerp functions. At this moment, where I was a little bit lost with all these values, the creator of this effect, who was watching me coding it, gave me a piece of advice that changed my life. For real. He told me that a lerp function can be used in two different ways. Mind blowing. Either to go smoothly from a value to another one, which was the only way I used it, or you can also use it to go from a minimum to a maximum value following the easing curves you want. This is a little bit complex to understand and to explain in this video, but learning to record this effect made me for sure a better developer with a new set of super tools. With this done, we had the two most complicated features of this effect. Super exhausting, but super fulfilling too. Now I am happy to announce you that with all the values we have struggled to compute, we can finish this effect without any new complications. Do you believe me? It was my thought, and this time, I confirmed it super quickly when, in two more hours, we finished entirely this effect. Adding the rotation of the main column, the two twins duplicate columns, going in the opposite direction, and the translation effect of the two columns. Basically, all of these other features were relying on this zoom quantity computation and the infinite scroll. And we did it! Oh my god! It was the most complicated effect I dared to record on stream. And on stream, had a shitloads of complexity. You can't trust me for this. A good opportunity for you to see me struggling a lot. And I have the sensation that you like seeing me struggling a lot. So many viewers, so many new followers and subscribers during this live. We beat every record. Thank you very much for this. And all of these new followers keep watching me now streaming my new project, which is rebuilding the Apple new MacBook Pro. And this is such a funny project. We decided to rebuild it from scratch without using any framework or library. Just pure HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Follow me on Twitch if you want to see this. Thank you all for your help and support in the chat. Thank you Nebrob for the infinite scroll and thanks Adrien van der Poort for opening my eyes to the second nature of Lerb functions and for creating this amazing effect. It sounds important to me to share with you the difficulties there are behind such nice effects. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's super hard. And you really have to be imaginative to create such a revolutionary experience like this one. It was Benjamin Code. Subscribe and like to spread the love of coding beautiful things. Ciao.